You're watching France 24 and it's time now for our daily leaf through the world's papers. Jinty Jackson joins me in the studio. Good morning, Jinty. Morning, Catherine. Now, let's uh, start with quite a complicated story. So listen up, everybody. Four years ago, over 60 mercenaries were arrested for plotting a coup uh, in the tiny West African country of Equatorial Guinea. Uh, we've reported that quite a lot on France 24, but today the alleged mastermind of that coup gets his day in court. He could face the death penalty, but what does the British press make of this story? He is of course a Britain. Well, the Guardian newspapers actually put the story on their front page and they've had this uh, interview with uh, the president of Equatorial Guinea, which I think really sheds some interesting lights on the case and it's one that's likely to, it could really blow up in the, in the coming days. Uh, the gaunt figure that you see there on the front page of the uh, Guardian is actually this former SAS soldier, Simon Mann, he's in handcuffs, he's sh uh, shackled. Um, he spent four years already in a Zimbabwean jail before being moved to Equatorial Guinea. But there he's being well looked after, says the president, and with good reason. Uh, journalists covering the three-day trial will have to enter the court in flip-flops, T-shirts, no watches allowed. Even the pen and paper will be supplied to them. Authorities, of, they fear another plot, but this time it's against the accused. They're constantly monitoring what he eats, uh, who sees him in case someone tries to poison him. Now that someone, according to the president, uh, Theodora Obiang at least, is that uh, this Lebanese uh, businessman, Ili Khalil, who has ties with the British government uh, and is, is accused of financing the plot, at least by Equatorial Guinea, could be trying to kill him. So um, it's, it's interesting that uh, whereas uh, another South African plotter got 34 years in prison, uh, this time the president says he might consider clemency for man if he really does come forward with more useful information. Chinti, let's move on now. And Barack is back in the press today. Even uh, the French would vote for him, it seems. Well, yes, this article could have, in fact, been uh, titled uh, Yes, We Can Too. Um, it's an article in the New York Times, of course, and Barack Obama is inspiring the emergence of a new kind of black consciousness here in France, says the paper. Kind of unintended spin-off, you could say, of his campaign. Obama is trying to transcend race uh, over there, but here, uh, people in France, so black people in France, say that when it comes to race relations, France is, in fact, lagging way be behind the US. That in, in fact, here, we haven't had those kinds of debates, although France may think it's in some ways advanced and, and, and all that kind of thing um, on this issue. Uh, here people uh, really, you don't see the word noir, black, printed in newspapers much, but now with Obama's emergence you're seeing it more, people are talking about it more. Um, in France, in fact, it's, it's even illegal to conduct a census to find out how many black people live in the country. Uh, but now Obama's rise is also giving, uh, giving rise here to a new version of black pride, pride known as Negritude. Ginty, from uh, Noir to Les Bleus uh, this evening and to football, of course, the entire country will be glued to the television, no doubt, as France takes on Italy, trying to reverse that uh, World Cup spooking they got last time. Uh, it's stirring up old rivalries, though. Indeed it is, uh, that's to say the least. Uh, first of all, a provocative front page of Italy's La Gazzetta dello Sport, which I think says it all there. Ancora tu, Francia, which you can probably pronounce better than I can. You again, France. Uh, that might incense some viewers in France, but the battle's begun even before the two teams get onto the field, the paper says. Both teams traditionally wear blue, of course, but during the infamous World Cup final in Berlin, it was Les Bleus who had to wear white, Tonight it's the other way around, and despite that, the Italians are obviously feeling quite comfortable. Uh, but over to France, it's a different story, of course. And uh, Le Parisien's headline is "I forti quoi?" We must believe, as tonight or never, the paper says France still has a chance, slim as it may be. Thank you very much, indeed, Ginty Jackson, for that look at the world's papers. You're watching France Fan Cat. Stay with us. <laughs> Culture without frontiers and with an open mind. Artists who've stood the test of time, stars, discoveries, and some razzmatazz. Cultural diversity from the four corners of the globe. Monday to Friday, 9:20 a.m. Paris time on France 24. Business is brought to you by Dexia, the public finance bank.